Hello friends, this video on NEAT Human Health and Diseases is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Let's move on to the next category which is opioid uh, narcotics. So what are opioid narcotics? Now opioid narcotics, why are they called opioid? Because from the name opium, opium itself is uh, one of the psychotropic drugs which fall under the category of opioid narcotics. And all the other drugs, they are all derivatives, they are all derived from opium basically. So here under opioid narcotics, we will talk about many different drugs and all of them are obtained from opium. And opium naturally is obtained from uh, a part of the poppy plant. So we will talk about that. So opioid narcotics are basically painkillers. Now we all understand what are painkillers. They are also known as analgesics. So analgesic is just another name for painkiller. Now under this category of painkillers, you have many drugs like opium, morphine, codeine, heroin, smack. So these are all painkillers. So what do these opioids do? So these opioids, they bind to specific receptors in the central nervous system and therefore act as analgesic. So it is like, let's say that I got a wound. So why do I feel the pain? What makes me feel the pain? It is not the wound. It is my brain which makes me feel the pain. My, my brain tells me that, you know, it is paining. Right? But if I do some sort of manipulation in the brain so that even though I got that wound but my brain is not able to either interpret the pain or it is not able to convey that message that it is paining. So if either of these happens then what happens? I do not feel the pain. So even though it is still wound it is still actually paining but I do not feel the pain. So that is what exactly is done by these painkillers or analgesics. So they bind to a specific receptor in the central nervous system and doing that the cent from the central nervous system we do not get a message that you know it is paining. So, so that is blocked. And that is why and that is how in fact all the painkillers work. You would have seen that when people undergo major or minor surgeries. Now during surgery they, the patient is always under anesthesia. So the patient doesn't come to know what's happening. But once the surgery is over that particular area needs some more time to heal. And till it heals completely there is some pain in that area. So therefore the doctors put the patient under painkillers so that the patient cannot feel that pain. And this is how painkillers work. Now let us talk about each of these painkillers. So the first one is opium. So opium is uh, reddish brown in color. It is, uh, it has a very uh, strong smell. It also has a bitter taste. And what it actually does is it slows down the respiratory activity. It also affects digestion. It can also cause sterility. That is it can uh, cause infertility. And from where do we get opium? It is obtained from the latex of unripe fruit of poppy plant. So this is your poppy plant. If you look at the fruit of the poppy plant, so from that fruit you obtain opium. Now all of the other analgesics, whether it is morphine or codeine or heroin or smack, all of these are derivatives of opium. So they are derived from opium in some or the other way. So if you talk about morphine, so morphine is an active principle of opium and the name morphine is derived from the name Morpheus, which is the name of the Greek god of dreams. So god of dreams because you know when you take these you forget the pain and you are like in a dreamy world. So with something uh, of that sort, with some, some linkage of that uh, sort, this name was given for this particular uh, drug. Now, it is a very, very effective painkiller. So, morphine is an extremely effective painkiller. And in fact, it is a very strong painkiller as well. It is a strong analgesic. And therefore, it is useful in patients which who undergo surgery. So, morphine has... Uh, many useful applications for patients undergoing surgery. The next is codeine which is chemically methyl morphine and this one is a mild analgesic so it is not as strong as uh, morphine but it is you know it, it, it does not even cause addiction. So the ingredient it, it is also an ingredient of many medicines and also cough syrups However, it has a side effect like if you take too much of cough syrup containing codeine, it might cause constipation. So that is like one side effect of codeine. 
Fourth one is heroin. So heroin is again a highly addictive painkiller. So if you regularly take heroin, you get completely addicted to it and it is three times more potent than morphine. So you can remember how strong it is. However, it is formed from morphine. So heroin is formed from morphine by acetylation. So when you perform acetylation of morphine, you get heroin. Now, there are some major after effects of taking heroin like it can cause indigestion, it can cause reduced vision, weight loss, uh, infertility. So there are many disadvantages of taking heroin and that is why one should always stay away from these drugs. The fifth one finally is smack which is also known as poor man's heroin. That's because it's uh, comparatively cheaper when compared to heroin. Now, why do people need heroin or smack? Because once people start taking them, they get totally addicted to it. So they continue taking it for a longer period of time. And when the consumption of heroin and smack is so high inside your body, it results in several diseases, basically. So uh, smack, in fact, is a stronger analgesic than morphine. So you can imagine how strong smack is. So out of all these painkillers which we have discussed right, right now, uh, morphine and codeine, these two find their uses in the medicinal uh, purpose, like in the medicine industry, they find their usage. Other than that, heroin, smack, all of these are addictive drugs and therefore one should definitely stay away from them. Now, out of all of these which we have discussed right now, opium, morphine and codeine, these three. So these three, op the first three basically, opium, morphine and codeine. These three are called natural opiates. So they are called natural opiates. Why? Because they occur naturally in opium. In fact, morphine, morphine and codeine, they naturally occur in opium. And what, what is opium? Opium naturally occurs in nature. It is just the latex of the unripe fruit of poppy plant. So we do not artificially manufacture any of them. So opium exists naturally. Morphine and codeine exists naturally in opium. Right? So that is why they are called natural opiates. Whereas the last two, that is heroin and smack, they are called semi-synthetic opiates. Why semi-synthetic? Semi is half. So that means they are half synthetic, half natural. Why like that? Because we obtain heroin or sma smack as a result of acetylation of morphine. In fact, when you do acetylation of morphine, the main product is heroin and the byproduct is smack. So acetylation is an artificial uh, method which we do. So that is why that is a synthetic method. But since it is obtained from morphine, which is a natural product, so this is semi-synthetic. So heroin and smack, they are semi-synthetic opiates. Now the fourth category of psychotropic drugs are the stimulants. So what do the stimulants do? The name itself says that they stimulate. And what do they stimulate? They stimulate the nervous system. And when they stimulate the nervous system, they make one more active, more alert. In fact, they cause excitement. So what we were learning in for tranqui tranquilizers was that they reduce excitement. They reduce uh, anxiety. In this case, the stimulants, they, they cause excitement. So after taking these uh, stimulant drugs, what happens? A person becomes more active. A person becomes more alert. So a person gets more excited. So that's about the stimulants. Now in under stimulants, again, you have many different types of drugs. For example, caffeine. So caffeine is uh, chemically, it is 1,3,7-trimethylxanthine. As you see on the screen, this is the structure of caffeine. It is a mild stimulant, however. So that means it doesn't cause like too much of effect. It's like very mild and gradually the effect is seen. The caffeine is often taken in beverages like tea, coffee, cocoa and cola drinks. It is a, a CNS stimulant that stimulates the central nervous system. However, excessive intake of caffeine can cause addiction. Like you would have observed that if you start taking tea every day, every morning if you take tea, what happens? 
after 10 15 days it becomes an addiction so then it you are like every morning you need a cup of tea otherwise you might get headache otherwise you might feel as if your uh, stomach is you can feel heaviness in your stomach so you know you actually get addicted to caffeine that is why a, a lot of us often encounter our parents or grandparents who are badly addicted to tea or coffee and once they are addicted to it it's very difficult to uh, you know get rid of that addiction so therefore we should not we should avoid excessive intake of caffeine as well because excessive intake can cause lack of sleep uh, it causes restlessness sometimes it makes you feel panicked uh, it can also cause indigestion now during your exam days sometimes when you want to study late till night or when you want to wake up early in the morning and quickly become active and start studying what do you do a lot of you must be doing this that you wake up in the morning you take a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and suddenly you feel that you know you are fresh and awake so why is that that's because of the presence of caffeine which acts as a stimulant the next stimulant that we'll discuss is cocaine so cocaine is a coca alkaloid which is obtained from leaves of cocoa plant now what is cocoa so this coca plant is nothing but chemically this is erythroxylon coca erythroxylon coca so that's the scientific name of coco plant cocaine is also termed as coke also called as coke now this is a more powerful stimulant so cocaine is a powerful stimulant than caffeine and it causes lack of sleep as well as lack of appetite and it is also very uh, addictive therefore uh, one should stay away from cocaine so if you look at the chemical structure of cocaine this is how it is the next one is crack so crack is extremely addictive in fact it is the most addictive out of all the stimulants that we are going to discuss here so crack however is a derivative of cocaine so it is obtained from cocaine and it is also comparatively cheaper however the effects are more dangerous for crack so excessive intake of crack can cause heart problems or it can even cause mental problems betel nut is another stimulant which of course is a mild stimulant stimulant now again we do see a lot of people uh, uh, chew pan that's what we call the betel leaves so they normally uh, put some masala inside the betel leaf uh, they and they put this betel nut inside and they chew it so presence of betel nut often stains the teeth the color of the teeth gradually turns red even the gums become red why because the betel nut contains a red tannin and it also contains an alkaloid called aricolin so it contains an alkaloid named aricoline whose chemical formula is C8H13NO2 so this is present in betel nut and this is also addictive but yes of course it is not that strong addictive and also this is a mild stimulant but it is always good to stay away from anything that can cause addiction with regular use so uh, even if you consume pan sometimes maybe some on some occasional days that should be fine but regular intake of it might make you addicted to it so thank you please visit examfear.com for free quality education you can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons you can ask your questions you can refer notes and you can take a free online test we have content for class 6 to 12 on physics chemistry mathematics and biology along with practical videos so please subscribe to our channel for daily updates thank you